Hello, everyone. Welcome to Missouri Star Live. I'm so happy to be here with you on this fabulous Tuesday. I am Misty Doan, and I am joined by the fabulous Liz. Hello. Behind the camera. <laughs> behind the camera today. <laughs> That's right. Hopefully, you guys have been enjoying our Bloomerang project that started yesterday. If you didn't see that already, be sure to catch that. We'll be having a bonus every Monday, so pretty fun. We're pretty excited. Yep. To, that All we got March, to teach National together. Quilting Month long, but and it, yeah, it was really fun. Thanks was, for having me. Misty. It was so great. So I'm glad you were brave enough to come from behind the camera and join me on set, <laughs> and I hope you guys are enjoying that as well. Um, so yeah, we have lots of fun things going on for National Quilting Month. There's so much to do. It's really exciting and fun. And, you know, one of the best things is that I get to check in with you guys every week. And so we also have a new kind of promotion, not really promotion, what do you call it, Liz? That we're trying to get people to share their quilty love a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so for National Quilting Month, we want to show off a, on Pinterest a wall of quilts. Yes. When it just Your creation. Pave Pinterest with quilts. And so we have a new hashtag to share with you. It's hashtag MSQC wall of quilts. Yes. And so if you share your beautiful creations with us, we're going to make a whole board just so full of all the inspiration to share with each other. Yeah, that would be awesome. So whether you post on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest itself, be sure to use that hashtag so that we can find your beautiful creations. And then we're going to put together this awesome Pinterest board to celebrate all of the beautiful work that you guys do. And I think that's going to be really fun to check really out. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. So be sure to uh, play along with us. We'd love to see your work and help celebrate, you know, the awesome art that is quilting for National Quilting Month. So in that same vein, not only is it National Quilting Month, but today is Read Across America Day. It's something that I'm very passionate about. I'm an avid reader. I love to read. And I want to instill the love of reading into my children as well. And especially since I'm a homeschool mom now, we spend a lot of time reading and searching for books that they love. Um, and so with that thought in mind is kind of what spurred the idea for today's project. So I designed this super fun, what I'm calling a, a reading pillow. My kids call it the road trip pillow um, because nice. they think it's perfect for taking on road trips because you can put your books or your tablets and there's a pocket that's the perfect size for a flashlight, or as Ashlyn says, lots of snacks. You know, it'll hold a bag of M&Ms just right. I think that's brilliant, yes. Yeah. So multi-use, but the thought here is that it's a great pillow that you can customize uh, to your kid's style um, and throw on their bed so they can keep whatever book that they're reading close at hand and it's ready for them to dive into a great book. So let's talk about this project. Let me show you how to make it. It's really, really simple. The fabric that we use for this is so fun. It's called Hungry Animal Alphabet. And let me just open up this print because it's really, really cute, all these different animals. And this is by uh, Jay Weckerfrisch for Riley Blake. And it's just so, so cute. I love the little flamingos and the elephant and the mama bear with her bread. It's just really fun details. It's really, really darling. It's, it's adorable and it totally has that storybook feel. So I think it was perfect for this project. So to go along with this, we have a great printable that walks you through all the supplies that you need and the amounts that you need of each one. Um, so be sure to click that in the link so that you can print that off and have that to make this of your very own. But I'm gonna walk you through all of the individual sizes as well. So let me just fold those up. So I use this cute print as the pocket you can see here. And then there's this really great um, alphabet print that I used for the back section that I actually went ahead and quilted. And then I used the check on the back of the pillow. So this is actually just a pillow cover. So you can switch out with an 18 inch pillow form inside. Um, really simple, very washable, which I think is really important for a kid's project. So let's dive into making this. So to begin, the first thing I did is I used the print that I wanted to be my background, which is these adorable alphabet letters. And you can see here, I just used some masking tape or painter's tape, whatever you have. And I measured out every two inches and created this quilted grid. So I actually cut my front piece a little bit larger. So this is a 19 inch uh, square on the front and I just sandwiched, sandwiched it together. Excuse me, I'm so excited. Let me slow myself down. <laughs> <laughs> sandwiched it together with my batting and the same backing. If you remember this part's gonna be on the inside. So if you wanna use scrap or just plain 
for the backing, you absolutely can. And I like to use uh, that free fuse powder to base mine all together so everything's nice and, and uh, you know, tidy and easy to quilt. And then I just did some straight line quilting. And I just wanted to leave on this masking tape to just kind of show you. I, I started with that corner to corner line. And then from that, I measured over two inches, two inches, and I just kept moving my tape. And so I think that's really easy. So now we can go ahead and remove this. And if you guys are looking for some more in depth on how that works, um, Natalie did a final stitch episode. She has using a great that. episode on that. So you can get lots of detail on how to do that. But it's it's fun and easy and a great way to use household items in your sewing room. Absolutely. And it turns out so nice. And I like I said, I made this just a little bit larger because I want to have room to cut it down. And for me, no matter how hard I try, if I start with the exact size I need, it ends up a little wonky and I end up having to fight just a little too hard. So I opted to give myself some extra fabric so that I could trim it down because what we need now is an 18 inch quilted square. So I'm just going to start along one side and make a straight cut. And while you're making that straight cut, um, Southern Crafter says, what type of spray basting does Misty use? You use the free fuse powder. I do. So it's actually not a spray at all. Mm -hmm. It is a sprinkle on powder adhesive. And then once you hit it with an iron, it kind of activates the glue and holds everything in place. It's my favorite for small projects. It works really great. And you don't have to deal with any of the odor or overspray like you do from um, a spray based. Okay. So now I'm, I've got this straight edge. I'm going to line that up on my mat just to make sure I keep everything square. And I'm going to look here, make sure that I'm doing my math correctly. There we go. Okay. And we are just going to cut this to size. And you can see here what I meant about it getting a little bit wonky. So I'm straight along this bottom edge, but you can see it barely touches here. And on the outside corners, I'm getting just a little bit of flare. And so those are the things that I want to be able to trim up and have finish nicely. And so I'm just going to turn this. Now I've got two straight sides. And remember, we need 18 inches. And so I've got this on the two inch line, so I need to make sure I'm coming over to the 20. And now I can use my cutting mat kind of as a guide of where I need this cut to go. Trim off that. And now we're gonna make one more cut to get our square. And this is really good advice, Misty, anytime that you're making something with a quilted piece to make it a little bit bigger and trim it down. It really is. I think you're going to be much happier with the finished product if you take the time to go that route. Yep. And several folks are mentioning, and this could be for kids at heart too. So absolutely. absolutely. That's a great point. You can find some fun fabric um, that speaks to the reader in your life, whether they are a kid or a kid at heart, and exactly. make a beautiful pillow. And so see how nicely that finishes up since we gave ourselves a little bit of extra room. So we're just going to trim that to 18 inches square. And now we're going to set this aside for a minute and we're going to work on our pocket. So what you need for the pocket actually is just another 18 inch square. So just of whatever print you desire. And so you can see here, I'm using this really cute animal print and I've just folded it in half and given it a nice press. We're just going to make sure it's all going to line up and it, it, it does, but I want this to have a really nice finished edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch this. If you want this to have a little bit more stability, you could put an interfacing or um, a fusible fleece in between. That would work great. I didn't really find it necessary. So I'm just going to top stitch. Okay. So let's move this out of the way. And we can just do a nice little stitch across the top. And Phyllis says, I love the idea of using this as a road trip pillow. It's a great road trip It is trip a really pillow. great idea. I know. I was like, 
kids, you're genius. So smart. I would be the kid who thought of putting the snacks in as well. Oops, you guys. Apparently I wasn't actually threaded. I sewed that whole thing and not a single stitch actually happened. So let's try this again. All right, no worries. Let me see what happened here because something is not happy. So we're just going to re-thread and try while you're, again. While you're re-threading, um, we have a couple questions. What was the hashtag? So the hashtag is MSQC wall of quilts. And the idea is to use that when you're on social media to share photos of your quilts so that we can gather them all together into a giant wall of quilts on Pinterest yeah. and share that inspiration. And so we're really excited to see what that is going to look like. Yeah, I'm excited too. I'm really looking forward to that. And right. Kristen says, what are your favorite books, Misty and Liz? Misty, what's oh. your favorite book? avid reader that you are my favorite book oh my goodness that's hard to choose and honestly well I love Harry Potter I do I love yeah. Harry Potter as the whole series uh book three is my favorite <laughs> of, <laughs> of Harry Potter I love Prisoners of Azkaban but I am also a big Jane Austen fan I read yeah. um I read Pride and Prejudice almost every year um I just really love to read I read a lot of different books I read a lot of business books now, and so I, but I do, I just try to be constantly reading something. What about you, Liz? What's your favorite? Well, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that my husband's book is my favorite. He's Aww. a writer, and his book is my favorite, That's of course. That's so sweet. But I'm also a big Jane Austen fan and Harry Potter fan, and I think pretty much anytime someone hands me a book and says, I think you'll like this, I read it, and I probably do like That's it. That's how so. I feel, too. I, I love stories. I think it, they're just really magical. And I love when you can find something like this and slip a book in as you give it to kiddo as well, so exactly. they've got a brand new book, too. I love that, too. All right, how's this? Hmm, you guys, what is happening? The live gremlins have come to set no. and are giving us trouble. So let me just figure out what on earth is so going on with our machine. Ruth says, I made nine of these at Christmas for the grands and they love them. This Aww. is a really good project to make a, a lot of. That is a great idea. So Dory says, what is his book? His book is called The White Wolf in the Darkness. And it's a little sci-fi um and meets magic book that takes place in the future in space. That's so, so fun. you will find out in the next couple of weeks how much of a sci-fi nerd I am. And I am really excited about all those things. There we go. I fixed it. I fixed it. No problems, guys. Okay. Back to sewing like a dream. There we go. <laughs> so we just got that top stitch all the way across the Perfect. top. Perfect. And now we can set this here on top of our um, quilted backing that we made. And, and Joanne, go Joanne's ahead asking, and, Misty, real quick, yeah. I'm new at sewing, is it a quarter inch for the top stitch? Oh, so I just use less than a quarter inch for okay. the top stitch. You really can choose whatever you desire, but I think a little bit skinnier than a, a quarter inch has a little bit more professional look for a top stitch, but okay. just play with it and see what see you what like. See what looks good yeah. to you. Yeah, absolutely. And so then now we're going to go ahead and add our pocket. And so I have this five inch ruler. And so I'm just going to measure over five inches. You could really decide how um, big or small you want to make the pocket, depending on the kind of books that you read. If you read smaller books, you might want a bigger snack pocket, you know, you might just for the future. So let's go ahead and grab, I've got just a, a chalk marking tool here. So this will wash out later. And I'm just going to make a mark all the way down here where I want to stitch that pocket into place. Oops. Make sure I can see it. And then we're just going to put a few pins in this just to hold everything where it needs to go. And now I'm going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch right on that line that I drew. And you do want to make sure that you back stitch here at the top because that's going to get quite a bit of wear as you put things in and out of that pocket. So you want it to be locked in place. All right. 
So I've just back stitched a few times. There we go. And you'll notice I didn't back stitch at the bottom because I'm going to catch that in the binding later. So we don't need to worry about that. Okay. And so now the front is pretty much ready to go. And let's talk about making this envelope back. So we just have an overlapping back so that we can, like I mentioned, take this off, wash it. Um, so when sticky fingers touch it, we don't have any problems. And so you're going to cut two um, 18 by 23 inch rectangles. And so what I did is I just cut a 23 inch by the width of fabric. And then I was able to get both of those 18 inch rectangles out of that one cut. Gotcha. And so you can see here, we're going to do the exact same idea that we did on the front pocket where we fold it in half press and we're going to top stitch it. But we just have a little bit larger piece now. So I've got this pressed in half. Let's go ahead and top stitch that edge as well. And this is where whatever width you decide on the front, I would just carry it over and do the same width of your top stitch on the back, just so it's nice and consistent through your whole project. Good advice. Oh, Alicia, good idea. You could also use it for a journal with a box of pens. Yeah, there's several ways to use this. There we go. So now those are both ready to go. So this is really about all you have to assemble for your whole project. So now I'm going to actually turn this part where I've got my pockets and you'll notice I left my pins in. I'm going to keep them there for now. I'm going to just turn this upside down. And actually, where'd my rotary cutter go? I'm going to trim off these threads too. And now I'm going to line my pockets up. Um, the, the pocket that I attached to the front, I can see is running this direction because here's my seam line that I put in place. And so I want the overlap of the, the envelope closure to run perpendicular to that. Okay. I just found that it all stood up nicely and held its shape better when they were going opposite directions. And so I'm gonna line up my first pocket so that it fits right on one side. So you can see I've just lined up top and bottom and the side edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some pins in there. And one more along the bottom. And Tracy had asked, are you sewing on the fold? Yes, when we're top stitching, it's on the fold on the side. Fold. Yeah, that's a good question. Good question. And so now I've overlapped this. And again, we're lining up our sides and our top and bottom. And we're going to put some pins in there to hold everything where we want it. I like to make sure I have um, some pins in place where these are overlapping as well because we don't want these to flip over and get in our way when we're stitching and accidentally sew one down the wrong direction. So just take your time, use quite a few pins, and then now you can see our flap is here and when we flip this over, our pocket is still here. For mine, you can see I chose to just add a binding all the way around the edge. And the reason I did that is because that leaves no raw edges. So I literally took this just like this and I took my two and a half inch strips like you would for any binding and I just sewed them onto the front all the way around the edge and bound it by hand like usual. If you're worried about it slipping or dealing with all the layers before you attach the binding, you can go in and add a basting stitch all the way around. Just make sure that it's narrower than where you will attach the binding so that your binding completely covers. So that. you'd sew it closer to the edge than the quarter inch exactly. so that your quarter inch binding covers up that basting stitch. Exactly. Kay. And so you just, you know, take a, a nice wide stitch all the way around the edge and then we just bind the edge just like so. Turns out beautifully. It's a really quick bind, you know, one episode of a show and, <laughs> and you're done with this, this cute little thing. And you can also finish it by hand by attaching the binding on the back, bringing it around and sewing it on top. 
but it gives you this beautiful finished project that is really durable and fun and great for kids and kids at heart. And so. kids at heart. So can you flip that aside one more time? So Jana said, please explain the pillows pocket is going horizontally. Yes. So and you, then when we take the book out, you can see here, here is the pocket. Yep. And then when you flip it over, the flap is running this direction. Perfect. So perpendicular to the direction that the pocket goes. And I just found that it, it worked better for me that way. It probably is not a huge deal if you, you know, flip it the other way. And honestly, if you had it the other way, maybe then you've got like two pocket options. Mm. You can just use the more the snacks. <laughs> more snacks. That's right. So th the possibilities are really endless. But I hope you guys will take the opportunity to make one of these projects, include one of your favorite books, and share it with a child or someone that you love to encourage them to read and also talk to them about your love of sewing. I think it's a great opportunity for us to share things that we love with those around us and, you know, spread some, some good, good quilty love on Read Across America Day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I hope you have a wonderful week, and we will see you next time here at Missouri Star Life. Bye. Bye.